What is a shadow? Well, to see one, we had to have a light source that produces a beam of light. We see that beam of light when it hits a surface and is illuminated. A shadow is formed when some object blocks part of that stream of light. Therefore, when the light hits an object or a surface, there is a spot that does not get illuminated. This is the shadow. Shadows take on the silhouette of the object that's blocking the beam of light. We are used to seeing shadows, and our subconscious knows when they're not right. It won't tell you why it's wrong, it'll just make it feel awkward. Many times, if shadows are a little bit off, the objects that are supposed to be sitting on something appear to be kind of floating. It won't look right for what you want to achieve. Granted, a lot of computer programs will do shadows for you. But again, to get what you might want, you might have to change it or manipulate it so it looks a certain way. Here is a simple shadow. It's a pole standing on a surface. The direction and length of the shadow is determined by the light source that's on it and where it's coming from. There are two factors about the light source that give us this. One is the angle of the light source on the ground plane itself. This gives us the starting point of the shadow at the base and going out in some direction. The other is the angle down from the light source that shows where light can start going over the top of the object and illuminate the surface, thus giving us the length of the shadow. Let's find a shadow in a simple drawing. Here I've drawn a red line that could be that pole we just saw. When we do simple cast shadows, we get to just decide what angle will be the ground angle, the angle down. The ground angle says the shadow comes out in this direction. The angle down comes from the top of the object, the last place that it blocks the stream of light, and comes down towards the ground angle. Where it hits the ground angle tells you when the shadow stops. And here we have the shadow. Now let's look how we use this simple flagpole method to determine shadows on more complicated or three-dimensional objects. Here is an isometric drawing of a cube. To find its shadow, we must be able to find where the edges cast shadows and where they stop. We can make a vertical edge represented by a flagpole, just like our last little demonstration. So you would have three flagpoles that represent the edges that you see. There would have to be another flagpole to represent the edge you don't see because it affects the shape of the shadow. Again, we have our ground angle and the angle down. And we're going to use them to calculate the shadows of the edges, which are represented by the poles. First we find the ground angles, then we're going to use the angle down to find where these lines that represent shadows end. Now we put the lines back in to make the cube, and we can see where the edges would make shadows. Notice one of these would happen inside the cube, so it isn't going to show up. Also, because this is a solid object, supposedly, we wouldn't see this flagpole. We wouldn't see all the shadow from that edge. Now we have the three flagpoles that represent the edges and their shadows. Now we have to find out how they link together. 
Well, we know that the flagpole's bottoms are linked by this line, but that would be in the shadow. This line up here connects the two tops of the poles, so the tops of the shadows would be attached. Now we're getting near the final shadow. We look at it and we realize that we're not going to have a shadow from this pole. We did need to find its height though. Now we have the shape of the shadow that would be cast by this cube if the light was coming from the two angles we have decided upon. Here it is with the shaded side and here's the shaded side with the shadow. 